It's the rematch of the century, the ever loving Hulk versus the Jolly Green Giant, who will be victorious this time around? Well, let's hop into the pages of Immortal Hulk issue number 41 and find out together, shall we? So then, as this issue begins, we actually check back on in with Dr. McGowan. It seems that she's run to ground and is looking for a particular shadow based safe house from her time working with General Fortin. The place has been long since abandoned and is about as creepy as everything else in this book. All the same, though, McGowan hopes to use as a staging ground to help her friend Bruce Banner and the Hulk, and really they could use it right about now. And that's because as we check back on in with the Hulk, he's currently having the gamma crap knocked out of him by a very vengeful thing, looking to even the score following the Hulk beating him into a coma after his honeymoon. Though Ben Grimm admits this is a little bit of an empty victory right now, as the Hulk really isn't himself right now, he's weaker, emaciated. In fact, the thing probably walks away with the line of the issue by saying, Geez, Hulk, you know what? Spider-Man hit me harder back when he was Franklin's age. What's wrong with you? This fight goes from exciting to actually pretty tragic in just a couple panels as the Hulk actually starts crying and asking for the thing to stop beating on him. Ben is slow to relent, though, saying that the Hulk really is one of those classic bullies who can give out a lot of pain and punishment but just can't take it himself. Furthermore, it's not like the Hulk stopped when he killed all those people in Iowa, right? And so the ass whooping continues, that is of course until the thing manages to clobber the Hulk so hard he turns back into Joe Fixit. Though in a rather interesting bit of storytelling, the thing actually can't tell the difference between Joe Fixit, Banner, or any of the other voices rattling around in the Jade Giant's head right now. Fixit ultimately proves successful in ending the fight and does so in rather compelling fashion by making the thing feel bad about himself. Fixit says that the big guy Hulk he was beating up on has the reasoning skills of a child. Once this revelation has had, the thing actually shows his softer side to Fixit by actually making him some food while down in Coney. It's here Fixit gets the thing up to speed on everything that's been happening with the Hulk's shadow base, gamma flight, the leader, etc, etc. Needless to say, it's a lot of ground to cover and the thing can't quite make sense of all of it. At first, Ben even offers the help of Mr. Fantastic, saying that if it's a big brain problem fix it has, then maybe they can use a smart guy like Mr. Fantastic to defeat the leader. The only problem is, is that this isn't about super science anymore. This is about magic and the afterlife and so many other things. But you know what? Ben Grimm isn't a slouch in the faith department either. He talks at great length about one of the many times that he died. Hey, it's comics, don't you know? And how after he was born, he actually started going to Temple again. It was there he first heard the story of Job, a story that's been referenced several times throughout The Immortal Hulk by Al Ewing. For those who don't know, the story of Job is about a good, faithful man who has his life completely ruined by God, all in an attempt to win a bet with the devil. As the thing reveals, he himself has often felt like Job many times throughout his own superhero career, and he often does wonder why bad things seem to happen to good people so often. Often. But also that maybe he never truly ever had it as bad as Job did because, well, he always had his friends and family watching his back, and maybe if the Hulk is going to make it out of this one, well, he needs the same. If nothing else, Fix-It's heart is genuinely kind of warmed by the fact that the Thing keeps calling him the Hulk, as if he sees them all part of one whole that he's trying to help instead of several distinct personalities all warring for dominance with one another. Why, even to make up for everything that happened before the Thing agrees to let fix -It it go this time and cover for him. And so yeah, maybe friends are the answer for everything that's ailing the not-so-jolly green giant these days. The only problem is the Hulk has a long list of enemies, too. Like the newly resurrected walking ghost, and the zombified corpse of Rick Jones, who have been fused together into a truly horrifying homunculus, because, well, when it rains, it pours, doesn't it? And so that was the Immortal Hulk issue number 41, everybody, and leave it to Al Ewing to sell a big fight issue, give you the fight, but then also turn the very concept on its head by having the latter half of the story be about two of the strongest, most guarded characters in Marvel Comics actually open up to each other in ways you never thought possible. The Immortal Hulk has also been filled with a lot of real religious imagery and references, but this is probably the first time that that subtext has boiled to the surface and straight up just become text. The Hulk is once again cast in the role of Joe, but the question is, is he a good person being punished by 
an uncaring god for no good reason? Or is the Hulk collectively a bad person actively being punished for all the things that he's done wrong? You know, the smashing and all. I can't say for certain right now, but it certainly looks like Al Ewing is leading up to an actual answer to that very complicated question. Overall, I'd give this one an 8.5 out of 10. Immortal Hulk continues to be just some of the best reading out there. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink wink. If you like my content too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.